Hey, I'm Jim. I'm the pastor here at Flatirons, and I'm really glad that you're joining us for this Christmas series that we're calling uh, Who Does That? Where we're taking a different look at Christmas and maybe thinking about it in a different way. So I hope you enjoy this series as we ask that question, Who Does That? All right, it's Christmas. You ready? Are you ready for Christmas? I'm not. I, 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 so before we get this, I, I was all ready for Christmas. I couldn't wait for it to get here. We wrapped all the presents for the grandkids and all that uh, on, on Friday. We were done. We were just done. And then, uh, so, so if, I made a newbie mistake. And I've been married 34 years. So men, just write this down uh, because this is gonna just save you a lot of heartache. So Robin and I made a decision. To, we're trying to re remodel our basement, so we're trying to save money. So we made an agreement that we wouldn't get each other gifts. And she didn't mean it. <laughs> no, so Friday night, at like at 9.30 night, she goes, so I did end up getting you a gift. And I'm like, no, because I'm a man of my word, and I didn't, I didn't get, I, I, I did, I'm screwed. I, I mean, there are no more shopping hours. I got to do this all day. And so um, I'm going to be sleeping alone <laughs> until next Christmas. Unless, if anybody has an extra gift, I'll, I'll give it to her and I'll claim it. So come see me after church, because I'm, I, mean, just, I don't know what I was thinking. She lied. That's all it is. Um, <laughs> hey, welcome to Christmas weekend at Flatirons. This is one of my, again, my, my favorite weekends of, of the year. And, and whether you're sitting right here in the room with me or in the lobbies or, or at one of our five campuses or, or we're streaming right now across the country, I, almost every state's listening right now. This just blows my mind. There's 17 countries listening right now. And then this is going to be online. So maybe, maybe it's, uh, let me speak to the future, all right? It's July, all right? And someone said, you got to check out Flatirons and you landed on this one. Here's what we're doing, okay, uh, on, in this moment right now. We're all coming together. Um, to, to use this moment to remember that an event actually happened in history a long time ago, right? And it had never happened before that, and it has never happened since. And, and, and we came here today to go, we want to remember that day. Because it's set in, mo in, in motion a chain of events that has just changed a lot of our lives. Which brings me to this name of this series. And when I, when I say series is that uh, here at Flatirons, I, I teach in series, like four or five week series where we take something and we kind of break it apart. And so we're, we're wrapping up a series called Who Does That? And if you haven't been here, let me just kind of catch you up. Um, we've been looking at not, not only what kind of God we have who does the kind of stuff that he does, all right? I mean, a lot of churches, you know, talk about God and the stuff that he does. But we've been kind of connecting that with another big question that a lot of us have. And that is this, what kind of person do, do you want to be? What kind of God is he and what kind of stuff does he do? And what kind of person do you want to be? And then what kind of life do you want, want, want to live? And here's what we've been kind of unpacking. The hope is, or at least this is what Jesus taught a, a lot, was this, is that you, you say you want, I want to be a good person. Most of us would say that. Or I want to experience a, a, a good life. And what Jesus says is this, is I know how to get you there. All right, and, and the key to it is you, you've just got to get to know who God really is, which seems just overwhelming. So Jesus says, well, just spend time with me. Get to know me. There's a verse in the Bible that says that everything you need to know about God, you can find in the face of Jesus. So just, just spend time with Jesus. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, if, if, if we spend time with Jesus and listen to his teaching and, and kind of kind of hang out with him and watch him, eventually we'll, we'll start kind of understanding how Jesus thinks. Right? How, how does Jesus think about that? And what does Jesus believe is true about that? How does, how does Jesus see stuff like that? When, when, when Jesus is in a certain circumstance and with people like that, whatever, how does he treat them? And, and, and the goal is, as we spend time with Jesus and see how he thinks and how he defines things and, and the way he does things, we'll take a look at our own ideas, because we all have ideas and thoughts and definitions and we're, we're holding on to them about God, about religion, even about, you know, we look in the mirror and we have a lot of thoughts and, and judgment about that person looking back at us, and we might be right, we might be wrong, but, but the, the hope is, is that the more that we get to know how Jesus thinks, we'll rethink our thoughts and our definitions and our ideas, and maybe say, you know what, I'm going to let go of this and, and, and take hold of something better, and the goal is, if I can think like Jesus and then see, see better like Jesus, hopefully what comes out of us, it's better, I want something better to come out of my life. And, and here's the key. It's not because I'm trying to be a good person. We've all done that. We've all tried that. I'm a, this year, and this is what you're going to do next week on January 1st. This year, I'm going to be a good person, and I'm going I'm to be more patient, and I'm not going to get angry, and I'm not going to do this as much, whatever. And, and it's good for about, I don't know, five minutes. 
right? And then, and then somebody pulls your trigger and you're like, blah, blah, and then it all comes back out. Because, because so someone's going, that was you last year, right? Whatever, right? Because nothing changed on the inside. And see, we can all fake it for a while, but, but the truth is, the only thing that's gonna change anything is if something changes on the inside so that Jesus said this, what just naturally overflows out of us, it's, it's, it's better. So, so we've been trying you know, to approach some different situations, that, and they're not just obscure situations, they're situations that we face all the time. We've been trying to put them through, through this filter, like, like okay, so, so I, I bump into something, and I've done it 50 times this year, and I'm bumping into it again. This time, I, I wanna think about it differently, all right? I, I gotta think about it differently. Every time I've approached a certain situation in my life, I've always just kind of gone right to, well, this is what's going on. But I wanna rethink it. Maybe something bigger is happening here if I just stop and think about it. Followed by this, I, I, I have to see it from a, from, from a different perspective. Okay, I'm thinking different, and I, now I'm not just looking at the surface. I'm actually gonna see maybe there's something else going on underneath there that I haven't been paying attention to. And then if I think different and I see different, then hopefully maybe I could do a new or different thing to see a good result. I'm really tired of just responding the same old way and then apologizing for it. I spent a lot of my life doing that. And so, so Jesus says, I, let, me, let me just show you what that looks like. And he, he gives us some examples. And we've been looking at like 10 verses over the last month. And they're the 10 verses in the Bible that I wish weren't there. We all have that page or chapter or book, whatever that is, okay? But there's this, like, like, when Jesus says that, you're going, oh, I wish he hadn't said that. Because when, when, over the last month, as we've been looking at these really hard verses, um, they, they feel really, ah, uh, just horrible, like, like, um, like religious rules or laws or commands, and then when something bad happens to you, it just feels like Jesus is saying, whenever that happens, you just take one for the team. You just, you know, take it. You just be passive and weak. And you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, that's not me. <laughs> Maybe you can pick up on that. I, that's just, that's not me. I mean, all my life, I've been raised, and this is why a lot of us left church in the first, and I don't blame you, all right? I've been, I've been raised with this. Now, if you really love Jesus, if you really love God, if you're a really good Christian, and somebody does something mean to you, just let it happen. Don't fight back, don't stick up for yourself, don't, don't defend those that you're, you're protecting, you know? Just, just, just be weak, and if somebody does something to you, just, just be a wuss if you love Jesus. Trade in your truck and your testicles and buy a smart car. Just surrender everything. <laughs> Welcome to the Church of Politically Incorrectness. I don't care. <laughs> So did he mean to say that? It's in my manuscript. It really is. I just, I, you know, that's why a lot of men don't go to church anymore. It's like leave, leave all your strength and all your courage and all, everything that, that you want to be and, and dumb it down. And that's nothing like the Jesus I've met. That's why a lot of men, men and women go, you know, who would follow a weak leader like that? And what we're gonna find is Jesus is anything but that. See, here's what Jesus has been teaching, uh, and it makes sense, it, and it lines up with what inside of us we just intuitively know, I wanna, I wanna be that kind of person, and I, I wanna experience that kind of life. So, for example, you know, there, there's this verse in there that goes, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek. Listen, this is what Jesus is teaching. There, there are actually times, if somebody were, to, if were to, to attack you, the appropriate response would be to stop them. Not just take one for the team, all right? Uh, to to, to um, defend those in, in, in your care. They're counting on you for protection. Not every time, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta fight back. But here, here's what we've been looking at, all right? If we would just step back and not do what we always do, but just, I, I wanna think about this different. Think better. And let me see what's really going on in this situation. Maybe this time, going punch for punch, evil for evil, insult for insult, maybe that's not my only option this time. Maybe I could actually do something better rather than the automatic thing I always do when somebody says something to me, does something. Jesus is saying, think about it. Sounds like a better way. Or how about this? Um, th there are times when people ask you, can, can I have that? And it'd be a good thing to give it to them. But, but we have to use our mind. There are some times when giving things to people at different seasons of their life, it would actually make it worse. And we all use that excuse. But the truth is, the truth is, most of the time when somebody wants me to give them something or help them out with something, I, I might use that as an excuse, you know, I, they, they wouldn't take good care of it or whatever. The truth is, I'm a selfish person. I'm a selfish person, a lot. And I just gotta look at that sometimes. And a lot of times the reason I don't wanna give has nothing to do with what they need. I just don't wanna share. 
And Jesus says, you just might wanna sh- look at that, right? Or, or how about this? Um, and Ben taught this so well last weekend. Um, while loving and forgiving our enemies might, in the moment, you, you, somebody does something to you, you're going, I, I, don't, I don't wanna forgive them. I certainly don't wanna love them. And Jesus would actually go, that makes sense right now, okay? Just don't stay there. You might wanna move in a better direction. Um, like, like this, like all the hatred, and I think I speak for all of us, we all have people in our life that we just hate. We're just angry because of what they did to us. Or worse, you know what, I'm angrier and I have a lot of bitterness, not just what people have done to me, but to people that I really care about. I wanna I want fight. But, but here's what Jesus is saying. If you are honest, most of that anger and that bitterness that, that you're holding on to, it's ruining your life more than it's affecting them. I love how Ben said it last week. It's like we're, 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 we're the ones that are caught in a hate prison. And if we ever wanna be free, we, we might wanna rethink this and look at it differently if you wanna experience anything close to freedom or a good life. And, and so that, that's tough teaching. Who teaches that? Jesus. Who does stuff like that? Well, well, Jesus, but the hope is, is that more and more, who does stuff like that, I want the answer to be me and you. All right, I'm, I'm not like Jesus, but I'm, I got one under my belt this week. I responded like a couple times this week better than I, than I used to be, and so I'm moving in that direction. And so all that sounds good, and here at Lafayette, I can see a lot of heads going, yeah, that makes sense, Pastor Jim. Cheers, right? <laughs> you think it's water, it's so funny. Uh, uh, but <laughs> it, sound, it sounds good until we get to this one little verse that I wanna look at today. All right, we've been working our way through um, the Sermon on the Mount. It's the first public sermon that Jesus ever gave, and it takes up three chapters in the Bible. And, and, and when he spoke it, it wasn't three chapters, but, it, but sometimes I wonder if he, because he's God in flesh, right, he can look down through history and go, they're gonna take my sermon and break it into three chapters, so at the end of this first chapter, I'm just gonna throw a grenade out there. And that's what today is. So, so whatever comes up with you, like right now, I, I promise the people sitting there in that field that day were like, I'm out. Listen to this awesome teaching that Jesus gives us. All right, how about this? Be perfect. <laughs> wow. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Okay, time out, Lord. I need some clarity here. So, so Jesus, all right, first of all, um, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek. Eh, I'll try. Um, uh, if somebody you know, begs and says, hey, can I have some of your stuff? I'm supposed to give him my shirt and go, go the extra mile and give him my coat too. And you, and you say that I ought to move towards loving and forgiving my, my enemies. And then on top of all that, you just put a cherry on top that says this. And, and just for extra measure, be perfect. Excuse me, Jesus, how perfect do you want me to be? Be perfect like God. And I'll just say it for all of us. Huh? What, 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 does that, what does that even mean? Be perfect like, like God. Be, what, so, I didn't know what it meant, okay? So, this is what you pay me for. That was written in Greek, the Bible's written in Greek, and so I have a Greek dictionary. So I looked up the word perfect. You're welcome, all right? So, <laughs> here's what it means, all right? The word perfect in Greek is teleos, there will be a quiz later, all right? Teleos is the Greek, we don't have to remember that part, but here's what it means in God is this, all right? That which has reached its goal, that which has reached its purpose and limit, it's complete and lacking nothing. It's done whatever needs to be done so that it, it, it's finished. So perfect in this context of, uh, of what kind of God do we have, the answer would be we, we got a perfect one by that definition. What, what do you mean? We, we have the kind of God who will go to the most extreme limit to do everything needed to complete and finish the goal and purpose that he set out to accomplish. So, so God says, listen, I have something in mind. I, I, I want it to happen. It's gonna take a lot, but I will go to the limits. I'll do everything possible to fulfill and say, I did it, it's finished. Well, uh, Pastor Jim, can you give us an example of that? Hmm? Christmas, ta-da, right? right Chris, I mean, think about this, okay? Time out before we get into this Christmas stuff. In, in a room this size, over five campuses, spread across the world online, stuff like that, I, here's what I know. We have the entire spectrum of belief system represented here. We have some people listening to my voice right now who are going, yay, Jesus, I love him, how about you? Whatever that is, and you're all in, welcome. We also have some people listening to my voice right now, the only reason you're here is grandma won't give you Christmas money if you don't go to church. So, <laughs> you're here to keep grandma happy and get cash on Tuesday. Welcome, no judgment. 
all right? We have the whole spectrum. We have people that believe. We have people that don't believe. We have people who are trying to, t- trying to figure out the whole thing. So I, I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go with me on this, even if you can only go like on a, on a theoretical or hypothetical basis, okay? Just take a breath going, I don't believe this stuff. Okay, but just go with me as far as you can. Here's the first statement. If there is a God, now some of you are going, well, I'm out. Okay, take a breath, buddy. Just go, go with me for a minute, all right? If there is a God, all right, all right, all right, and he's a God worth actually like paying attention to, that means that he runs everything. He runs the universe, he created all things, he knows all things, and he can do anything he wants if he's God. That would make sense, at least theoretically, right? So if he wanted to, to do something, he, he could do it any way he wanted. Like, if he wanted to send his one and only son to us, his name is Jesus, to do what needed to be done for us in order, order to pay for and remove any condemnation or separation that would keep you or I from living in friendship with God, if he wanted to do that, again, he could do it any way that he wanted to do it, including, and here we go, take a breath, if he wanted to, he could send an angel to a, to a 13-year-old virgin named Mary in a podunk town in the middle of Israel and tell her the Holy Spirit is gonna put a baby inside of you. It's never happened before. It will never happen again. That baby, his name will be Jesus. He will grow up and he'll be the son of God. He will teach things like this. Ah, the kingdom of God is available. The power of God, living in God's presence is available to everybody who wants it. Anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. You could be a throwaway person. You could be mourning because you've lost the most important thing in your life. You might have a stomachache every day because you hunger and thirst for righteousness. You might be trying to do the right thing and it backfires on you every time. Jesus says, I want you. I want you in my kingdom, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna die on a cross as payment for your sins and your mistakes. I wanna take away anything that would keep you out of my my kingdom. All I'm telling you is you just gotta trust me a little bit. How much? Just as much as you can. And my, my death will pay for your sins and I'll reconnect you back to God, my Father, and you can start living with my Father right now. Now, if he did that, you gotta think an event like that would, would be a big deal. So much so that if there's anything called angels, it makes sense that God would fill the sky with angels to announce the event to some shepherds who were living in a field watching over their sheep because sheep raising was the number one industry in Israel 2,000 years ago, all right? And, and, and by the way, if there were some astrologers, magi, wise men, whatever you wanna call them, who were traveling, studying the stars, if God created the universe, he could put whatever he wanted in the sky and say, follow that, it will lead you to my son. He's the son of God, he's in a manger. You might wanna worship him. If there is a God worth paying attention to, he could pull that off. I don't even think he'd break a sweat, right? I don't think it caught him by surprise. I don't think he looked down on the earth and went, oh, this is jacked up. (laughs) Angels, anybody got a thought on this? No, I I think he goes, I got this. I got this, and I know know exactly what to do. So the question, who, who could do that? Well, I mean, logically, at least theoretically, right? If there's a God, God could do that. But that's not my big question. My big question you know, around Christmas is not who does that or who could do that, and it's not even, well, why do you do it that way? All good questions. Here's my big question when it comes to the whole God, Jesus, Christmas thing, all right? Why do it at all? Why bother? I mean, who does that? What, what, what kind of God would send his one and only son to pay for crimes and mistakes of people, most of whom, um, will reject him, um, ignore him for most of their life, or, or here's my story, you get all emotional at camp one, 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 one Friday night, and then you give your life to him, and, and you feel like I got some guilt and some shame taken off of me, I'm pretty sure that after I die, I go to heaven instead of hell, but I spend most of my life ignoring him or taking for granted, unless I get in trouble, and then I throw up a Hail Mary 911 call, right? Jesus, bail me out one more time, and then he takes care of me, and then I go right back to my life. Except for December, I, ca- I carve out a couple weeks in December, to remember that he was born in Bethlehem, but really Christmas has become much more about Santa Claus and Black Friday sales and surfing Amazon, which I should have done, all right? Or, or how about this, <laughs> one, one Sunday in, in the spring, we carve out one Sunday and we try to squeeze in some church between Easter egg hunts and family dinner as long as it's not spring break and the slopes are still open. Other than that, you have my undivided attention. Why, why would he do that? And I'm not, that's my story, I'm not judging anybody. Who, who would do that? And here's, uh, here's my answer, not me. 
I wouldn't do that for you, all right? I wouldn't, all right? So here, I'll get more specific. If I was God, this is when you all go, I'm so glad he's not God. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, if, if I was God and I had to choose between saving any of you versus saving my kids or, or my grandkids, let me just be clear. You lose every time. Every time, and if that hurts your feelings, let me explain it, all right? So, here's, here's why. <laughs> I love them more than I love you, all right? Ta-da, right? I, I, lo- I love them a lot more. I'll be really honest with you. I know some of you. I don't even like you. <laughs> I don't, and I've seen you drive, and they should take your license away, all right? All right. <laughs> so, I love them more than I love you. Now, here's another aha moment. God loves you more than I love you. I promise, okay? I, lo- I love my family better than I love you. God loves you more than I love you. Let's keep on going with this. Here's, God is better than me, all right? So I'm going, well, I, I'm glad he knows that. I am very aware of that. God is better than me. What's that look like? Um, how about this? God is perfect. Go back to the definition. He's perfect. Well, what's that look like? Um, well, God loves you perfectly, And if you look at the definition of perfect and the definition of love, this is the kind of God we have. It goes like this. God does everything necessary in order to love you. What's the definition of love? God does everything necessary to provide what you need and protect you from anything that would take it away. I wouldn't do that for you. God says, "Whatever, whatever it takes, I'll go to the limit to make sure you have what you need and protect you from anything that would take it from you so I can finally go, okay, it's done. Can you give me an example of that? Uh huh. For God so loved the world, that's you, that he gave his one and only son. I wouldn't do that, he's better than me. That whoever, anybody, doesn't matter what you've done or what's been done to you, what people have said about you, anybody puts their faith in him, just puts a little bit of confidence. What's that mean? I, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm starting to believe that maybe Jesus is who he says he is and he will keep his promise. If you just put a little bit of confidence in that, you will not perish. Jesus says, you, I, you don't have to pay for your mistakes. I'll do that for you, and you will have eternal life. And this is an aha moment for, for us, all right? I grew up believing eternal life was what happened after your funeral, and then you went to some Disney castle in outer space and played with angels on harps for the rest of your life. <sighs> no, all right? That's not even in the Bible, all right? This is what Jesus says eternal life is. It's the moment that you get to know me. This is eternal life, that you know the one true God and Jesus whom he has sent. And it starts today. I'm living eternal life now. My funeral is a blip on the screen and we just keep going. We don't have to wait to meet God. God's here, God with us right now. God goes to school with you, God goes to work with you, God goes through your divorce with you, God goes through your cancer with you, God goes through everything with you. You don't have to wait on God. He's right here, you're never alone. That's why we're here. Some of us are hanging on to that going, I I needed to hear that one more time because I'm facing January and I I don't like what's coming. So what kind of God do we have? Here's what we have. We have a Jesus who voluntarily let go of his position in heaven. This is a book of the Bible. A guy named Paul says, Jesus had a good life. He had everything he needed. He was God. And he says, listen, I'm gonna let go of this because Jim, and then fill in your name there, they need me to do what needs to be done so I can connect him back to my father, right? So he, let, he voluntarily let go. And then what, what did he do? He, God taking on flesh, that's Jesus, all right, so that he could live with us. And anytime you sing one of those Christmas songs or read this word in the Bible, Emmanuel, it means God with us, God with flesh on. He couldn't save us from heaven, so he says, I'm gonna put on skin and I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna feel what you feel, eat what you eat, go through what you go through, hurt like you hurt. I wanna be one of you. How did he make his entrance? Jesus, born in poverty, not in a palace. That's what you expect a king right, on top of a mountain and, 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 and all, all, all this fancy palace around him. No, born in a barn, in a, in a cave, in poverty in Bethlehem. He was born to a teenage mom and a loving stepfather. Jesus, who, got, who grew up and, and, he, and he taught things like this. He announced that, that I, I came to open access to God's kingdom. It's available to anybody. You just gotta trust me a little bit. One of my favorite pictures of Jesus, and, and I, I love baby in the, Jesus in the manger and all that, and my wife collects nativities. They're everywhere, all right? But my, my, my favorite picture of Jesus is when he's on trial. This is a strong, strong man. He's standing before the most powerful king on earth. His name was Pilate, but he actually represented a guy named Fa- or, uh, uh, Caesar, who who thought he was God. And, and, and Pilate looks at him and goes, do you understand, I could have you killed right now. And Jesus looks back at him and goes, nobody can take my life from me. 
I voluntarily lay it down and stick around till Sunday. I will voluntarily pick it right back up. Jesus, who was beaten and shamed and crucified and died for sins that he didn't commit. And then three days later, he rose from the dead just like he said he would. They slapped him and he didn't slap back. They insulted him and he didn't insult back. And he would have won, but I would have lost. And so he did it for me. So what kind of God do we have that we need to remember on this Christmas weekend? Perfect one. A perfect savior does everything that you need. Everything you've been waiting on is available to you through Jesus. That's the kind of God he is. So let's go back to the original question that I I started this whole series with. What kind of person do you wanna be? What kind of God we have? What kind of man or woman do you wanna be? And what kind of life do you wanna live? And Jesus says this, I I know you want want something good in your life. Listen, I, I have a vision for your life. Let me throw it out there. I, I want you, and I, I know this, I, I see this in you. I want you to be perfect. Like in the same way that my Father God is perfect, I want you to, I want you to be like that. And, and just like, you know, in this room right now, 2,000 years ago, the same response. There was not one person who looked up at Jesus and went, I, I did it. Like there's nobody in your row going, I, I think I nailed it. I think I'm as perfect as God. No, you're not. You're not, tell them right now, you're, you're just not, all right? Um, uh, no, so, so that, then that leaves us with this dilemma. Either Jesus gave us like a command or something like that that we're doomed to fail at for the rest of our life because none of us have done it yet or, and here's what I wanna throw out to you. How, how about this, Jesus gave us a goal, like a purpose for our life, a kind of life to pursue and this kind of life is, is worth giving the rest of our lives to. See, I think that one of the messages from Jesus is you think too small and you think too low and you put up a white flag and you gave up. And Jesus says, I have a vision for your life and it's, it's perfect. See, Christmas is a day where we stop and remember what kind of God would do what he did by sending his son to Bethlehem knowing that he would be nailed to a cross in Jerusalem. Let's don't forget that. He's the, he's the, he's the kind of God who does whatever needs to be done to take care of you and me and everybody that he, that he loves. And if, if the goal is I'm trying to get to know him better so that I can move in his direction and become the same kind of person that he is so the same kind of things come out, out of me, here's what I wanna, wanna leave you with. So how are you doing with that? What kind of person are you becoming? How's this year gone for you? Are you, are you moving towards that? I'm not perfect, but... I'm, I've got some good, good stuff happening in my life, in my heart. I'm moving in a, in a, in a better d- direction. And if you're sitting there going, it's been, it's been the worst year. No, listen, again, no judgment. What Jesus would say to you right now is, okay, well, look at me, all right? Just follow me. We'll start where we are today, all right? Follow me and, and just spend time with me. And eventually, maybe you'll start thinking like me and seeing what's in front of you like I see and doing things that I would do. And the more we do that, Every once in a while, something happens and we go, I think I got close. I I got close one time. What's that look like to get close to seeing and thinking like Jesus? Well, I think think it looks like this. Hey, Flatirons. So uh, about three weeks ago, I I came to you and, and I introduced this new idea, this new partnership called God Behind Bars about caring for people that Jesus actually says, when you take care of them, it's like you're taking care of me. And, and, we, and I threw that out to you and just said, does that do anything in your heart? And over the last couple of weeks, um, you have exceeded uh, our, my expectations. I, I don't know if that's really true because I, I knew that this is so close to who we are that exactly what hap- would happen actually happened. I also told you that just a few days after uh, that we announced God behind bars, that we were gonna get on a plane and come out to Henderson, uh, Nevada, right outside Las Vegas, and and go to an event called uh, All is Bright, where we see uh, inmates uh, reunited with their their family members for a night where they're free, uh, where they they get to be normal moms and dads and open presents, and uh, that's all about to happen here at Central Christian Church here uh, outside of Vegas, and and we get to be a part of it as observers this year, uh, but next year... Uh, we're gonna jump in the deep end of the pool. I'm already in love with it. I know you are already in love with it. I can't wait to do it with you. So let's go check out All Is Bright.
So about three weeks ago, you and I sat down in the Flatirons Auditorium and we started thinking about what might happen and what could happen. And then we look forward to being to what we've experienced tonight. One of the things that, that Judd, who's the, the lead pastor here at Central said, is that God Behind Bars has been one of the most defining, life-changing like elements that's affected this church like no other. Can you, can you speak to that? What we've seen, not just here at Central, but our other church partners, is that it opens the eyes of compassion. I think it's the same compassion that Jesus showed yeah. to each and every individual that came along the way in his journey. And they get to see from a different perspective, a whole new set of lenses of these individuals that uh, they've had a tougher road than some of us. Uh, some of them uh, have had a good road, but just made mistakes and got caught. And I think that uh, ultimately are good people. In fact, I really believe that about 95% of the people that we work with uh, are begging for a second chance and they're just looking for that church, that family, the people that are gonna surround them ultimately to give them that second chance. You know, over the last several weeks, we've been unpacking that at Flatirons about, we have to think different so that we can actually see what's really going on. And I think, you know, God Behind Bars uh, is just like the perfect example of, you gotta think different and you gotta see people different and then respond different. You, we met on Friday. I went to stage on Saturday and Sunday to our church. Yeah. We put some boxes out in the lobby and, and I expected them to give uh, fairly generously. Yeah. I'm blown away. I, I, I want you to know, um, I want to give you, uh, this is the last two weeks and it's still coming in, but, but the total I want to give you today is $501,713. And that's, that's for God Behind Bars. Bro. That's for kids. That's for dads. That's for moms. That's for families. That's for Jesus. And it's an honor to party with you. I don't, honestly, I don't even know what to say other than thank you and we are so grateful and looking forward to this partnership and what God is going to do in 2019. Yeah, so, thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Love you. It. Yeah, love you. Seriously, bro. Yeah. Thank you. It's awesome, huh? Beyond. You have no idea. Seriously. I'm excited. Thank you. Good. Yeah. You guys blow me away. You really blow me away. Here, let me make it better. Is I took that 500, I went to Vegas, I doubled their money. <laughs> that's not true. Somebody came up, did you really? No, I, that's a joke. An illegal, all right? I wouldn't do that. Um, hey, um, so, so, the, so if you don't know what's going on, um, we are partnering with this organization, God Behind Bars. Uh, we are gonna plant two campuses inside of Colorado penitentiaries uh, in, the, in, the, in the next year, but not just that. We'll have church there every week, but we're also gonna partner with their families and their kids. So, so two weeks ago, I showed a video uh, of these little kids running down that red carpet uh, and seeing some of them for their parents for the very, very first time. And if that didn't make you cry, you're just a heartless person. Um, <laughs> But, um, but, and so I knew I would cry when I saw that, and I cried when I was in, in Vegas last week. But, but here's the thing that, that caught me off guard. Um, there's some statistics that say this, is that 75% of uh, people coming out of incarceration, if they don't have a plan, 75% of them go back within three years, all right? But that, that makes sense. Here's what just blows my mind. If, 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 you're, if you're in prison, 85% of your children will do time. Unless something changes, unless somebody jumps in the middle, and that's you all. That's us, we can break that chain, all right? Um, so, so we're gonna jump in there with, with God behind bars, and we're gonna try to break that chain by loving, you know, what Jesus says is, when you love the least of these, and, and he's, he gave us a list of them, like uh, the, the naked, the hungry, the sick, but there's one we've always neglected, I was in prison, and, and he says, and you visited me. That was him running down that carpet. Right? Uh, and we're gonna make a difference. So uh, on top of that, Thursday, we got invited to go down to Canyon City to maximum si uh, security prison down there, and we did a gift distribution. Here's the, the best part of this. So, so one of our guys on staff, he's handing out gifts to one of the inmates, and he sees that thin red line, and he goes, flat irons. I, I, I go to flat irons. I'm like, wow. That's awesome. And he says, when I get out, I'm gonna come back to flat irons. You know what? We're gonna welcome him and his family home because that's the kind of church we are, right? So if you wanna find out more about that, I, can, I just can't wait, all right? Hey, um, so we wanna be the kind of people that Jesus is. Christmas is all about this extreme, whatever it takes, I wanna do that. So how are you, again, how are you doing with that?
And we'll, let me just ask you this. Over the, the last year, or maybe as you're thinking about next year, is there anything inside of you to say, I could move, I, I need to move in that direction? Not to pay God back, not so that he will whatever, but because I'm realizing he has overwhelmed me and he has changed something inside of me. What, what, let me just, here's the, the takeaway. What, what is one thing you could do this week that you could look at something different, think different, and maybe do something different than you had planned simply because you understand how good God is? That's, a, that's the only takeaway. Here, here's how we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna take communion together. So uh, we come from a lot of different traditions. Communion is, is simply this. It's Jesus' idea. He knows that life will get overwhelming and then we'll screw stuff up and then we'll kind of look up at heaven and go, I bet you hate me again. Or, or we go through a hard time and we'll go, are you there and do you care? It's what Jesus did. He's so smart. He took some elements out of a Jewish Passover feast, the bread and some wine, and we're gonna use grape juice, right? And he says, I want you to take this as often as you need to and I want you to remember that I still love you perfectly. And that's not changing. Yeah, but what about, no, but I, but I, no, my perfect love doesn't change, no matter how imperfect that we respond. So we're gonna pass this out. We're gonna pass out bread and juice, all right? And so, we have, again, we come from a lot of visitors and stuff like that, so you're asking, am I allowed to take communion here? So for all you newbies, let me just inform you, we, we have very low standards at Flatirons. <laughs> Ta-da, all right? Um, and, and here's what I mean by that. This is between you and God. So here's what I mean by that. You have, to, you have to understand how much faith, how much confidence you have in Christ, in Jesus, in who he is and what he's accomplished. You know, this might be the first time you've ever taken communion in a long time. And you go, you know, I don't understand all of this. All I know is that if it's possible to live with God on this side of my funeral, because I'm facing some stuff I cannot do alone, Jesus, if you'll jump in that with me, if you could change something inside of me, I'll follow you forever. And I probably won't do it right, and I'll, I'll make mistakes along the way, but then we'll get back up and we'll just keep going, all right? So we're gonna pass, if you, don't, if you don't feel comfortable taking this communion, that's okay. Just let it go on by. Maybe you're going to another church service or uh, you know, later in the day or whatever that is, that, that's fine. But if you wanna take communion, you take that bread, and you take that, that cup and you go, you know what, I remember that I am loved perfectly. So Lord, in this moment, and we have a lot of conversations in our head with ourselves and with you right now, uh, trying to figure this whole thing out. And you, I think what you just wanna say is just take a breath on this old holy night and just remember that somebody loves you, somebody cares about you, somebody has not given up on you. Who does that? Jesus. Maybe we just need to crawl in here in all the trappings of this holiday and just hear one simple message. There's a perfect God who still loves me perfectly and I, I can have a good life I can have a good life if I'm locked up in a cell in Canyon City. I can have a good life if I'm in the most fancy subdivision in Denver but still feel like I'm in prison. I can feel like you know, if I'm a single mom and I'm overwhelmed, I can have a perfect marriage. I, I can be old, I can be young, I can be healthy, I can be fighting cancer. I can still, in spite of all that, have a good life because I'm not alone because God is with me, God with flesh on. His name is Jesus and he loves me perfectly. And I forgot and so I'm gonna eat a piece of bread and I'm gonna drink a little cup of juice and remember, he loves me perfectly. It's in his perfect name I pray, amen.